I'm Ben Frankel. I'm a product manager for Google Play. And with me today, I will be joined by Jonathan Chang, Steve Supe, as well as Andrew Giuliano. And today, we're going to be talking about unleashing the power of Play Store discovery. And what I wanted to do first, though, is get to know the audience a little better. I don't know all of you. I know some of you, but I don't know all of you. And what I wanted to do is to see like, what, what kind of the mix of people are here today. So I want to see a, so, a show of hands. How many of you are on the business side of games? You know, the product managers and so forth. All right, got a decent representation there. Uh, how many of you use the Play Console regularly, either looking at reports? All right, there's even more hands. Uh, and how many of you are engineers? How many of you write code, at least sometimes, or have ever written code? That might be some more hands. All right, well, this is a great mix for this talk because we have something for everybody today. So for the business side of the house, we're going to be talking about business impact, what these tools can do for your business. We're going to show some case studies. For the Play Console folks, we're going to show you how to use the tools we're going to be talking about today. And for the engineers in the room, we have an entire section at the end that's a technical deep dive into how to use Google Play Instant. And it even involves actual code. Oops, Daisy. Oh, oh I kind of blew that one. All right, so there's one more question. One more exciting question. I kind of spoiled the result, but just bear with me. Humor me for a second. Uh, I want to see one more show of hands. One more show of hands. How many of you think you've either seen or yourself have taken full advantage of all the promotional tools that Play offers? OK, so we got a couple of very optimistic people here. And I love that about you. Uh, but the answer is, like, no, none of you have really been able to take advantage of all of the tools that Play provides to promote your game on the store. But it's not your fault. It's not you. It's, it's me, or us, I should say. Because we haven't really done a good job of showing you, showing you what it would look like if you used all of the tools at your disposal to their full extent possible. And today, we're going to close that gap with an example, with an example led by a good friend of mine, Bert. This is Bert. And through Bert's eyes and some of his friends, which I'll also introduce to you, we'll show you what it would look like if you turned all of Play's promotional tools up to 11. More than 10, up to 11. This is a really big deal. So why don't we get things started? We're going to start at the beginning of Bert's journey on the Play Store. So Bert's the type of person who always wants to know what's coming next. He loves watching trailers of upcoming movies. And he gets the same buzz when he's looking at the pre-reg section on the store. So Bert's looking at the pre-reg section on the store, and he spots one of his favorite franchises, this game Snorecraft. It's big on PC. And unaware that things could get even more exciting, Bert dives into the store listing. Wait, what's that he thinks? There's free stuff too? I can unlock exclusive rewards just by pre-registering? And there's a demo? I can actually play this game right now. I can preserve and reserve my avatar's name. I can customize my avatar. And I can earn experience points all the way up to launch. This indeed was a triumphant day for Bert. Bursting with excitement, Bert pre-registered for Snorecraft and shared the pre-reg listing with all of his friends, or almost all of his friends. Bert slept well that night, dreaming of the rewards he was soon to receive. Fast forward, and it's launch day. Bert wakes up and stretches and sees a notification that Snorecraft is now available to everybody. And before even getting out of bed, Bert installed Snorecraft and immediately redeemed the long-awaited reward. Boy, was Bert excited. But this was not just a good day for Bert. This was also a good day for all the people Bert invited to the pre-registration. And not only his friends, but their friends. And then their friends' friends, and so on and so forth, until almost all of Bert's friends were playing Snorecraft. Almost. Almost everyone except for the Bobs. 
who I'm also introducing for the first time here today to all of you. So there's a bit of background on the births. Uh, these are identical quadruplets that were separated at birth, I know, and, uh, and through a mere quirk of fate, they happen to all be named Bob. You know, what are the chances? And it might not be obvious at first glance, but when the Bobs smile, you can really see the family resemblance here. So because the Bobs missed out on pre-registration, the Bobs' road to Snorecraft was different from Bert's and Bert's friends. Each had to chart their own path to eventually installing Snorecraft. So one Bob came through the new and updated section. Another was recommended Snorecraft. The third Bob came through the role-playing games collection. Bob number four had it suggested through ads. And for good measure, their cousin Becky discovered Snorecraft through the editor's choice section. But they all eventually landed on the store listing. But before we go on, I wanted to provide a bit of additional context about the Bobs. So after they were separated at birth, each ended up growing up in a different country. One lives in Portugal, one in Brazil, one in Mexico, and one lived here in the US. And each of them independently developed an unyielding passion for soccer, or how almost everyone else in the world refers to it as football. And this context is important because not only did each of the Bobs find their own way to the store listing, but when they arrived at the store listing, they discovered it was customized to their preferences. So with an international football event looming, the Bob from Portugal arrived on a store listing that celebrated his national team. The game icon, the screenshots, the text, all show their support for the team he loves. The Bob from Brazil saw a store listing that celebrated his team. And the Bobs from Mexico and the Bobs from the US store saw store listings that celebrated their national teams too. And the Bobs from Portugal and Brazil immediately installed the game. Right off the bat, no questions asked. However, the Bobs from Mexico and the US were initially a little reluctant to install the game right away. One Bob was concerned about the available space on his device. The other Bob was new to gaming and just wasn't familiar with the franchise. But fortunately, Snorecraft had an instant game. The space constrained Bob was relieved that he could try the game before committing to a big install. And the newbie, well, Though he was unfamiliar with the franchise, his curiosity got the better of him, and he clicked to try now, too. Eventually, all the Bobs installed the game and played happily ever after. The end. So, so hopefully, that's given you a sense of what taking full advantage of all the marketing tools the Play Store has to offer looks like from a user's perspective. So through Bert's eyes, you've seen the power of Play's pre-launch tools, the viral growth opportunity, the impact of pre-reg rewards in Google Play Instant. And through the eyes of all the Bobs and Becky, uh, you saw the impact of Play's post-launch marketing tools from customized store listings to store listing experiments. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn our attention to what the business impact is of these tools and the technical details of how to use them. And so I'm going to hand things off to Jonathan in a second, who's going to be talking about the pre-launch marketing tools. Then I'm going to, he's going to hand to Steve, who's going to be talking about the post-launch marketing tools. And then lastly, for the engineers in the room, Andrew is going to do a deep dive into how to build an instant game. And with that, come on on, Jonathan, take it away. Thanks, Ben. In the next section, we're going to go over some, of the, some time to go over some of the tools from the developer's perspective. We'll show and explain the opportunities available for you to use today, and go over some best practices to make your pre-launch campaigns as exciting as possible. Let's start with pre-launch. As we all know, in the console and PC world, pre-launch marketing and even pre-ordering has become a norm. Uh, well, today, 
I'm excited to say that pre-launch marketing is also increasingly popular for mobile games. In fact, for most games, the pre-launch and launch period is typically the time when you have the most buzz and interest around your game. Many game developers have told us that during this period is also the cheapest time to acquire a new user throughout the lifetime of their games. As such, it's crucial to engage with your potential players and hopefully capture their interest in your game before you launch. So, how do you make the most of this important period in your game's life cycle? And how do you effectively communicate what is special about your game and capture player interest even before you launch? Luckily, we at Google Play have some tools which can help you to grasp this unique pre-launch opportunity. Until recently, it has been very difficult for developers on Play to capture pre-launch buzz around their games and translate this to actual installs at launch. Developers had to think very hard about where to spend their marketing dollars and how to invest in different efforts, as there's no easy way to capture this interest and maintain it until the game is ready. Well, today I'm pleased to announce that Google's Play's pre-registration feature uh, has, is available to all developers on Google Play. For those of you who aren't familiar with the tool, pre-registration helps capture demand generated by pre-launch marketing, and it activates it at launch to help accelerate your pre-launch success in the market. When your pre-registration campaign is started, a clear pre-registration call to action will appear on your pre-release store page, which allows users to register interest in your title. In return for pre-registering, players will receive a launch day notification from Google Play, allowing them to become one of the first to install and play your game. Not only does it allow you to engage and reward core fans early, but pre-registration notifications also drive higher volumes of D1 and D7 installs. On top of this, Play's pre-registration tool is more effective than most when it comes to driving conversions to install. On average, we actually see that Play's pre-registration feature sees about a 38% conversion to install, which is a much higher conversion rate versus other pre-registration sources. Finally, pre-registration has the added benefit of allowing you to display your store listing to users on Play even before you launch. This allows you to drive traffic from all your marketing sources to a single destination in order to capture launch demand for your title. Next, setting up a pre-registration campaign is super easy using the Play console. First, you want to navigate to app releases. Then, you'll need to upload an APK or bundle containing a manifest describing your device types you want to include in your campaign and release it onto one of your closed testing tracks. Remember, you don't need to make this closed testing track available to any of your users. Its purpose can be simply to hold your APK or bundle containing these device restrictions. This will in turn activate the pre-registration control center, which will allow you to turn off and on countries where you want to run your pre-registration campaigns in. In this control center, you can also see pre-registration signups per country, as well as conversions to install per country when you eventually launch your game. Note that we will be limiting pre-registration campaigns to run for a maximum of 90 days in each country. You will see a helpful indicator in the console telling you when you are close to this time. Finally, I want to go over some recommendations to consider when using pre-registration with Google Play. First, allow some time to build excitement in your title. Usually between three to 12 weeks is ideal. Next, use all your channels to indicate and build interest around your title. You can use media, social, YouTube, communities, your own website, etc. And 
drive your Android traffic to place pre-registration on the Play Store, specifically due to the higher conversion rates. So that's Play's pre-registration feature in a nutshell. But wait, there's more. Today, I am pleased to announce that we are launching pre-registration rewards to all developers. What does this actually allow you to do? Pre-registration rewards allows you to offer a free IAP or in-app purchase to all your players who have pre-registered for your title. This reward is, is delivered to users via Play and is advertised via a special card on your store listing, as you can see on the screen. Configuring this reward is also very easy using Play Console. You want to select the IAP you want to give away, supply the text that users will see on your store listing about the IAP, and when your game launches, this IAP will be in the user library for you to consume in your full game experience. Also, remember to configure your reward before starting your pre-registration campaign to ensure that all your users will receive your reward when you launch. Using pre-registration rewards is a great way to add value to your pre-registration campaign. Not only does it help incentivize users to pre-register for your game, it also can drive uplifts of conversions to install, as there's value waiting for the player when they install and play your game. In our pilots, we have actually seen about a 15% increase in conversions when games are using rewards. In fact, we didn't just see an increase in conversion. One of our developers, Nexon, in South Korea, also shared data showing they saw a sizable increase in uplift, uh, uplift in engagement for users who received a reward versus those who didn't. Players were more likely to stick with the game and continue actively playing if they received a reward at the start. Pre-registration rewards is available to all developers right now to use in the Google Play Console. So another new addition to pre-registration is the ability to run an instant game alongside your pre-registration campaign. Instant games allow you to highlight key gameplay elements of your game and can even display a clear call to action to pre-register from within the game itself. Upload and configure your instant game as normal in the Play Console, and it will now show up during pre-registration if you distribute it to the same countries as you are running your campaigns in. This is yet another way to add value to your pre-registration campaign and make it more enticing and encourage players to finally pre-register for your game. It's also important to call out that all the features we just described can be used in conjunction with each other to help create a unique and compelling pre-launch marketing story. For instance, you may want to consider tying a pre-registration reward around the key item or character you are showing prominently in your marketing material, tailor your store listing around your pre-registration reward or instant game, and you may even allow players to sign up and create a character inside your instant game, which they can then carry over into your full game when it launches. We believe the intelligent usage of these features can help highlight and communicate what is special about your game, even before the audience gets their hands on the finished product. And we hope you feel inspired to create innovative and playful pre-launch campaigns. Now, I'm going to hand over to Steve, who's going to talk about how to effectively market your games even after you launch. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. OK, hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Steve. I'm a product manager on the Play Console. Thanks very much for coming today. Right. So at this point, Jonathan's just walked you through running a successful pre-registration campaign. And you've done all this work getting ready for launch. But once you've launched, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not actually finished. You've now just opened up the floodgates. Your game is now exposed to the vast demand that Google Play brings to you. This is scary, but it's a good thing. But 
you have to keep optimizing your marketing message if you're going to make the most of this exposure. So I'm going to walk you through the key features that will help you to do that so that you can continuously improve your marketing and your acquisition rate over the life of your launch. So when you first launch your game on Google Play, you'll have to design and publish your store listing. The store listing is your front page to your users. It's where users read what you have to say about your game and where they can browse your screenshots, your trailer videos, and hopefully even try an instant game. You've probably spent weeks or even months agonizing over the perfect icons, screenshots, and more to go on this page. And I'm sure your teams did a great job. But the thing is, it's really, really hard to know if you've gotten this right. Even if you think you're getting a good conversion rate, how do you really know that you've optimized? There's a lot of people out there visiting your page, and you'll want to maximize your chance of convincing them to install. And that's why the Google Play Console provides store listing experiments. Store listing experiments is our A-B testing framework that lets you try variants of your store listing via properly controlled experiments. You can easily try new screenshots, videos, and descriptions so that you can try all the great, and maybe not so great, ideas that you've ever had. You provide the ideas, we provide statistical analysis so that you can be sure that the changes in the results are significant. You'll find store listing experiments underneath store presence on the left-hand nav of the Play Console. For those of you that are already using them, we've introduced two new metrics that we think are your gold star metrics when you're launching a game. First, we have first-time installers. These are users who have visited your listing and are installing your game for the first time. The other new met uh, metric is one-day retention, which are first-time installers who have not uninstalled your game in the first day. So they've continued to keep your game more than 24 hours, which is when we find is the key time for retention. Even cooler, both of these metrics are now reported in hourly intervals. So previously, you might have had to wait 24 hours or more in order to see the most current results. So now you can see them every hour. You can also opt in to receive email notifications for when we think your experiment is complete. This will help you to make decisions more quickly so you can take advantage of good changes and avoid the bad ones as quickly as possible. Using store listing experiments can lead to great gains in user acquisition, such as Hothead Games, who saw a 40% increase in acquisition rate simply by improving their icon. Here are some tips and tricks that you should keep in mind when you're making the most out of these store listing experiments. So first of all, you should think back to how you were taught experimentation in high school science class. To get the clearest results, you should test just a single asset at a time. For example, changing your, ad, your icon or maybe a screenshot. Because if you change too many things at once, you won't actually know what drove that change in acquisition rate. Second, You'll want to make sure that you test for at least a full week so that you can track weekday and weekend performance because users behave differently depending on the time of the week. For games, the most prominent assets are your icons, screenshots, and videos. So make sure to prioritize these for testing. Finally, when you have a variant that we tell you is working, you'll want to promote that one to be your main listing as soon as possible, but you should continue serving your original as a 1% experiment for a few more weeks so that you can ensure that over time, this new one is still outperforming your old one. Great. So once you've optimized your store listing, you now have a solid foundation for user acquisition. You've probably learned a lot about your users along the way and the best ways to communicate what's unique and exciting about your game. But as you're looking at your experiment results and diving deeper into our user acquisition reports, you may find that there are specific segments that aren't converting as well as you'd like. Google Play enables you to run this global business, and not all users are the same. So I'm excited to talk to you about a powerful new feature that allows you to market to these different user segments in a way that is much more likely to get them to install your game. This is what we call custom store listings. Custom store listings allow you to create unique store listings delivered to specific user segments. So you tell us which types of users should see this listing, and we do the rest. 
So let me walk you through some of the, the new targeting criteria. The first targeting dimension that we've introduced is country. Up until now, you've had to rely on language as a rough proxy for geography. But users in different countries don't always choose the language you would guess. For example, did you know that half of users in India, over half of users in India, have set their device language to either American or British English? And these flavors of language are not the same. I know this firsthand. So I'm an American, born and raised, but I live in London. And if you've ever been to London, if you ever find yourself invited to a fancy dress party, you want to make sure that you got the country right. Because if you get it wrong, you could end up wearing a tuxedo to a costume party, or worse, show up wearing a costume to something like a wedding or an anniversary or something worse. Who knows? So with this feature, you can serve up to five different listings to completely different groups of countries. So by first targeting by geography, you're very specific in how you communicate to your users. So imagine you're a football game, sorry, a soccer game. Do you, want your, do you want your users to be dreaming of being in the most successful squad, or do you want them to be part of the winningest team in the tables? You can also use your icon to help users feel more at home, such as the use of English and American flags in the icons we have here. We're also adding other targeting capabilities. You can now target on the launch state of your game, for those of you that were excited about pre-reg. This is a really powerful way to change your marketing message to the right set of users throughout the life cycle of your game. So for example, for pre-registration users, you can now highlight rewards or display a pre-launch teaser trailer that the users in places where you've launched are not seeing. So you can really customize your message. For example, GameVille's game, Talion, was able to make use of pre-registration store listings. So like most games, they didn't launch everywhere at once. Using this feature, they were able to communicate their launch only to the users that were eligible for it. And they increased their, they, they basically doubled their pre-registration conversion rate. Finally, taking a step back, I want to give you a peek behind the curtain of what else we're up to. We're launching an early access program for install state. Today, when you think about your store listing, you're thinking about how do I get users to install the game? But some of these visitors already have your game installed, or worse, they've churned or maybe uninstalled your game. So we can help you to re-engage with these users, such as in this example, where we can communicate new gameplay in order to bring these users back and excite them into reinstalling your game. If you're interested in being part of this beta that we're running, be sure to go to g.co slash play slash install state EAP, and we'll get you signed up. All right, so I've just spent a lot of time talking to you about the marketing message that you provide, but there are other parts of this store listing that users see. And specifically, I'm talking about ratings. Did you know that 42% of users who leave a one-star review mention stability or bugs? No one in this room means to have stability problems, but it's often hard to measure and track them so that you can fix them. Luckily, we have Android Vitals to help you gather more insight. We offer 15 engineering metrics across five different performance areas to represent the things that users care about the most, so that you can measure the performance and quality of your app as experienced on real devices in the hands of real users in the real world. So if you're interested in Android Vitals, be sure to join some of these other talks that are going on this week. So to wrap it all up, custom store listings for countries and pre-registration are available today, as is, are the store listing experiments for all of these store listings. I hope I've inspired you to think about cool and unusual ways that you might be able to segment your audience to really squeeze out as much of the acquisition rate as you possibly can. Now Andrew is going to come up on stage and walk you through building an instant game which is a very important part of any store listing, but requires a little bit more technical know-how. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Steve. Hello, my name is Andrew Giuliano, and today I will be talking to you about Google Play Instant. And to answer your question, yes, I got a really bad sunburn during the keynote this morning. <laughs> it happens, it happens to the best of us. Google Play Instant is a technology that enables users to instantly be immersed in your experience with a single tap, letting them try your game without the weight of install. 
Here we see an example of Cookie Jam Blast being launched from the Try Now button in the Play Store. Today, instant games can be launched from anywhere across all of Play's properties and beyond. Now, how does Google Play Instant help your game? Simply put, it is getting players into your experience fast. It's increasing discoverability. You're getting more players into your experience across many surfaces. You're driving installs. Players are given the opportunity to install your game without ever having to leave the experience. And you're improving retention. By offering players a taste of your game, Google Play Instant helps players feel more confident that your game is worth installing. And this could lead to less players uninstalling uh, after your uh, download. And as, as you can see, this technology has been helpful to our partners. Across different categories, monetization strategies, technologies, we've seen Instant be impactful in driving uplift for our developers. If there's one key takeaway from this slide, it's that Instant could be helpful for your game. I also want to call out our fantastic ecosystem of developers that has formed to help others create their own Instant games. In fact, App On Board just yesterday released their App On Board Studio tool specifically built for Instant games, which helps creators create an instant game with no code. I believe this is a testament that we are not alone in seeing the potential of instant games to help developers drive installs. And we're not stopping there. We will be continuing to expand the reach of instant. You may have noticed a few slides ago the games playlist that lets you try a lot of games very fast. That's on the far left. And our success has emboldened us to elevate instant games from the store listing to the top layer of Play Store discovery, from the search, game, uh, search page to game highlights and collections on the landing page. These new experiences were made possible through the incredible support of our partners building instant games. OK, so now that we've seen the impact of instant, we'll do deep dive on building your own instant game from scratch. Engineers in the room, this fit will be for you. Now, under the hood, an instant game is just a 10 megabyte or less APK that is being served over play, downloaded, and run on a more secure runtime on the device. Creating a separate APK and getting under that size limit, it might sound difficult. But here we will show you uh, how easy it is to create your own instant game, and we'll give you all the tools to do so. In fact, if anything is to be taken away from the next section, it's that creating instant games is now easier than ever. In this example, we'll use Unity, but nearly any APK can be made instant. And we have a great plugin for Cocos Creator developers. We'll see that later. Now, first off, there are four major steps in creating an instant game, and this spans any game engine. You're going to build it out, so you're going to actually make the APK instant. You're going to uh, gracefully convert your users from the instant game to the installed game. You're going to reduce size to meet that 10 megabyte requirement, and we'll give you some and tips and tricks to do that. And you're going to do some publishing and testing on play to test the distribution of your instant game. So let's build the instant game. So uh, first off, the tools we'll need, Unity the great Google Play Instant plugin for Unity that will make a lot of this easier. You can get that on the Asset Store. You can also download it on GitHub. Uh, an Android device could be physical or virtual. Uh, we recommend testing on pre-Oreo and Oreo Plus devices, just because there's a slight difference in the runtime. And access to your source code and Play Developer Console. OK, so first step, you'll go to the build settings and the plugin. You will choose the scenes that you'd like to include in your Instant game, and that's it. So the URL is not uh, required. We provide a default one anywho. And don't worry about asset bundles. We'll see that a little later. Next, you'll configure your player settings. This is a mix of required changes you need to make your game instant. It's all a click of a button. You just click Update, as well as some recommended changes to help reduce that size. And then you just select Build and Run from the plugin, and you can run your game instantly locally. Super easy. So now that we've built an instant game, let's gracefully convert those users from the instant game to the install game, because obviously that's what we're trying to do here, right? That's the scope. So we make it easy by providing a show install prompt where uh, you just call one line of code, we show the prompt, and we take care of the rest. And it works for pre-reg as well. So players can pre-register and install without ever having to leave the instant experience. You know, likely you should put this at the end of your experience, right? End of a level, a match. Uh, and you could also show a persistent button so the user could at any time go to install. Additionally, you might want to carry some information over. We'll show you that too. That could be uh, buy in game items, levels, you know, when you customize your character, you can use the cookie API to transfer this data over. 
So here, you'll just call the one line above, and we will do the rest. Likewise, you can uh, just put a string of data together, and we will bring that over to the installed game. And this is all you have to call to get that data on the other side. And just like that, you have all the tools to convert your user from instant to installed. OK, let's look at reducing size. This could be the most frightening one for some developers, but we'll give you some help. So first off, you want to narrow the scope of the content in your instant game. You don't want to include your full game as an instant game. And if it's under 10 megabytes already, that's great. But really, you want to offer a trailer of your game. You want to offer the most exciting pieces. You know, show gameplay that is critical to understanding the full game. But you shouldn't just choose the easy levels. Show the exciting ones as well. And again, games as large as 350 megabytes have been able to launch instant games. And I'm sure more, even larger than that. No matter what game you have, you can create an instant game. Remove unnecessary assets. Do deep dive to your technical resources. Remove what's not needed. Uh, unneeded assets, even reducing uh, resolution. Really, you should ask yourself, is it critical to get a piece of experience? If not, remove it. Also, follow those recommended settings I showed earlier. That really helps in reducing size. OK. Finally, a really good way to get into that size limit are asset bundles. They allow you to load assets dynamically while the instant game is running. And these assets will not count against your limit. While you may use as many asset bundles as you like, each asset bundle must be less than 50 megabytes in size. So be thoughtful on how many asset bundles you import. There are three pieces needed to use asset bundles in your instant game. First, you want to create asset bundles from the scenes in your game. You want to show a user friendly loading screen while that is loading up. And you will need a web server CDN to serve these asset bundles. And using the tool in the plugin, we will help, uh, help you take care of those first two. So first, you'll go to the bundle creation tab, and you'll select the scenes that you want to include in the asset bundle. Once finished, we will give you a file that you'll throw up on your web server or CDN. And in that next screen, you'll specify the URL to access those files. Additionally, you can uh, provide a custom background for the loading screen I was talking about earlier, but we provide a default one as well. So super easy. And just like that, when you click Finish, we will uh, generate the code to retrieve the asset bundles in your game. So it's really easy, and you're all set. OK, so we've looked at some uh, tools for reducing size. Let's look at Play and how Play can help in this uh, testing of in the development phase. So you should take your instant game, and you should upload it to your internal test track. There's no size limit here. So you can use this iteratively while you're building this instant game to test the distribution up to 100 users that you'll choose manually. Now make sure that there is an accompanying installable listing, or you're in pre-reg phase, because you need to upgrade to installed, or you need to you know, be in the pre-reg phase. And then, of course, push to production when you're ready. And just like that, you have all the tools to make a production-ready instant game. You can see more information below at the link. Not using Unity, no problem. Make the following changes in your manifest to make nearly any APK locally runnable as instant. And of course, you'll need to follow the four key steps. We talked about some APIs earlier. If you follow the GitHub link, you'll see some sample code in native Android for using those same APIs, like Cook API and a show install prompt. We also offer a plugin with Cocos Creator that allows you to create an instant game by recording the gameplay, and they'll show you the assets needed to package in with your instant game. It's a really cool experience. So to quickly recap, there are three key things I want you to walk away with. Number one, that, offer, uh, that Play offers an incredible array of promotional and marketing tools, from pre-reg to store listing experiments to Google Play Instant. Two, these tools are easy to use. Most are configurable through the Play Console. And in the case of Google Play Instant, we showed you you could build a demo yourself or have one of our implementation partners build one for you. Lastly. Play's promotional cap capabilities can deliver material business impact. So what's next? You can start by taking a picture of this slide, which includes all the links from the presentations. Phones are going up. Now that we've taken a look at what instant games are, how they can help, and how to build your own, I want to give you a chance to test some of the instant games that are out there today. Scan the QR code, and you'll be brought to a collection of great instant games on the Play Store. At the bottom, here's the link to sign up for the customized store listing features and stall state EAP as well. So with that, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening.